Welcome back to Living 757. Now we're about to touch on a serious topic, so I'm gonna do something I don't normally do and I'm gonna read from my notes because these are some statistics when it comes to domestic violence. One in three women have experienced some form of violence by an intimate partner mm -hmm. and nearly 20 people per minute are abused by their partner in the United States. Statistically, that means at least one out of three of us sitting on this couch, welcome Nisha, mm -hmm. have experienced domestic violence at the hands of a romantic partner. Now I can tell you that I have experienced domestic violence and I know that you are a survivor as well. Yes. So we are actually more than the statistic because that would mean two out of the three of us have experienced it. Yes. Welcome to Living 757. Thank you. And can you share a little bit about your story with our viewers? Yeah, so thank you both so much for having mm -hmm. me, especially here on Domestic Violence Awareness Month. I am a survivor of domestic violence. I was in a very violent and toxic relationship for about five years, mm -hmm. which included various forms of abuse to include verbal, emotional, psychological, financial, and physical. Mm -hmm. So after getting out of that relationship, because there's always a last time and a last time mm -hmm. and yes. a last time always. after leaving for good, it was about a year, year and a half later where I decided to share my story via my gift of, I do spoken word poetry. So the first time I told my story was essentially on a stage holding a microphone. Wow. And after sharing my story, I think it was just a different way to get the word out. So I started getting asked to speak at various places like schools, churches, DV awareness conferences and things like that. And then what happened was survivors started reaching out to me for advice, which eventually led me to start my own nonprofit organization and get into this world of advocacy as we know it. Wow, yes. to be honest, I'm so proud of what you're doing and thank, thank you. you so much for sharing this with all our audience and with us today. Thank I know you. exactly for hence, um, I come from a family that I also, mm -hmm. we suffered domestic violence when we were little. So I know it's very, very hard sometimes yes. to, to walk out of this situation. Now, what are some of the misconceptions that are we, the common mistake that are we do when it comes to domestic violence? I think a common misconception is that you can tell who has experienced domestic violence, mm -hmm. that it has a face, that it looks a certain way, it has a certain demographic or zip code, and it doesn't. It doesn't care where you live, how much money you have in your bank account, mm -hmm. yep. what your education is. It can happen to women, men, it can happen in the LGBT community, old, young, black, white, it doesn't matter. It affects us all. And I think there's also a misconception that you can just leave that you can just get out is very simple and if it was that bad that you would do so and it's simply not that easy. Sometimes when you are in that um, abusive relationship, it's super hard to yes. make a decision. People yes. say like, I just leave it, but it's not that easy exactly. like I used to say. Exactly. So having said that it's not easy mm -hmm. to just up and leave a situation like right. that, what advice would you give someone if they know that a loved one is experiencing domestic violence? That's a great question. Well, mm -hmm. I would say don't say, why don't you just leave? Because instead of that being helpful, it's mm -hmm. actually sounding very accusatory. It puts the onus on the survivor as if it's their fault that they're in this situation. Instead, you can say something along the lines of, what are the barriers preventing you from getting to safety and how can I help you overcome those barriers? You're essentially asking the same thing, but one is very accusatory and one is very empowering. How so I, I would say, you? right, how can I help you? Mm -hmm. What do you need? How can I support you? So if you're offering that safe space, that place where you're not offering judgment, if you're going to stash an emergency bag in mm -hmm. your trunk for them or in your home, put aside some money, understand the dynamics of domestic violence, that goes a long way, even if offering a hotline number. There's a lot of great resources right. here, mm -hmm. right here in Hampton Roads in the 757, even just Googling DV awareness agencies in 757 mm -hmm. and so, saying, here, these are people who can help you. Yep, right. So offering um, the Dixie Chicks treatment isn't preferable? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> like, <laughs> we'll talk about it off camera, but yes, no. Yes, <laughs> out of camera, Scott. Okay, you and right. me, we're talking. <laughs> yes. Now, when right. it comes to you, Nisha, uh, yeah. Yeah, I know you're doing great things for the community. How you, as a, you know, you're a survivor in, yes. in, in your role, how do you bring awareness to other survivors? So I have, if you follow me on social media, 
Which you should. I always say I will not shut up. And that's something that my ex used to tell me. Just I love it. Be quiet. No one cares what you have to mm -hmm. say. It doesn't matter. So I'm about bringing awareness any way that I can. So we do a lot of outreach events that don't just involve getting a pamphlet and a pen and leaving with just that. We're trying to bring awareness, but also make something stick with you. So something my nonprofit organization does is every summer we have a, what's called a Summer Days Ice Cream Giveaway. And we book Aww. an ice cream truck and we visit all of the DV shelters in Hampton Roads oh, and that. treat the kids and the That's survivors nice. and the staff to free ice cream. I got into boxing after leaving that abusive relationship. So every year we have an event at the boxing gym that I go to. Love that. And yeah, so we have survivors, mental health advocates, mm -hmm. and yeah, just bring awareness Patricia, that way. Patricia, we need to go. Yes, Yes, do. for sure, we need to go. We're seeing some. Well, we just have her, her information also on the screen. If you yes. need help, please reach out to her, follow her on her social media as yes. well. Nisha, thank you so much thank for you. stepping by and also for your courage and share your thank story you. with yes, all of us. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you And guys. keep doing great things.